Hi, everyone. I hope you all are well. And again, I want to encourage my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And I especially want to encourage those who are suffering and waiting for God to rescue them. Maybe you've been waiting for a long time. Maybe your trial has caused you much agony and suffering, very intense, and your faith is wavering. You're wondering, will God really rescue me? You've heard the Bible stories of God rescuing people. You've heard testimonies of others on YouTube or people you know, but your faith is wavering for yourself. Is God really going to rescue me? I've been in this situation for so long, so intense, and I feel like God's not even answering my prayers. He seems silent. And so your faith is wavering. And on top of that, while you're waiting for rescue, you have this fear that, you might not be able to withstand this suffering, endure this kind of pain while waiting. You might crumble under the weight of your affliction. And so I want you to first realize this is not uncommon. A lot of Christians go through this very thing, which is why I'm making this video, and it's, I would say, common with a lot of suffering Christians. And then it is during these times where God wants you to just walk by faith. And when I say just, I don't minimize it, but that is what he wants us to primarily focus on during these times is to trust him, to not have to have all the answers, not to have everything worked out, but simply follow him with childlike faith, believe in his word and trust in him, rely on him. So I want to talk about what Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 through 10 that could relate with us. Verse 8, For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly pearl. He will deliver us. On him, we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. Paul, an apostle of Christ, who we can assume was very mature at this time, still went through a trial where God allowed him to come to the end of himself. He says he was utterly burdened beyond his strength, that he even despaired of life. How many of you feel this way? The Apostle Paul felt this way. And this is what he has to say. Why did he have to go through this? What did he have to learn? To rely on God. It says, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God. That is what many of us are learning through the trial right now. God wants us to learn to simply rely on Him, to trust in Him. And he learned a valuable lesson here, probably again, that God is, a, is the person who delivers him. God delivers his children. And here Paul says that on Him we have set our hope that He will deliver us again. So not only will God deliver us from our current trial, but He will deliver us from all trials to come. You don't have to be afraid once I'm done with this affliction. What about all the other afflictions that could come? All the different things that I can imagine, all the what ifs. God will deliver you. He will deliver you from all your trials and afflictions, all your pain and suffering. He will deliver you. But I want you to notice here, Paul still suffered. He still felt like he was burdened beyond his strength. And that's how many of us still feel as we rely on him. It's normal. And it's a process of sanctification for us to come to the end of ourselves so that we rely on God with all our hearts. We actually trust in him by leaning all of our weight onto him. So I want to talk about the next thing is, will I crumble under the affliction? I know I struggled with this at times when I was under deep affliction. What if I can't make it? What if one day I finally take my own life or walk away from God? These are all the what ifs that the devil wants us to ponder 
and to keep ruminating over it and cause us fear. But here is what 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. No matter how much suffering comes our way, God will provide a way for us to endure it. The suffering increases, so does his grace. And when the suffering on top of suffering increases, so does his grace. He will always sustain us, give us a way out, and he'll give us the strength and the grace to endure it as children of God, behaving as children of God. So it's a lie from the enemy for you to think that you will crumble, lose your mind, just lose it under the affliction. The Lord will make sure that you don't lose it, that you will endure it well as you trust in him. Believe in this promise and go no further on what if I crumble? What if I do this or that? Just don't even go there because you don't have to. God said, I got you covered. My grace is sufficient for you. Now, a story I want to share that I think is very applicable to us is from 1 Samuel chapter 10. And I'll just read the first three verses to give you a background on it. Then Nahash the Ammonite went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to Nahash, make a treaty with us and we will serve you. But Nahash the Ammonite said to them, on this condition, I will make a treaty with you that I gouge out all your right eyes and thus bring disgrace on all Israel. The elders of Jabesh said to him, give us seven days respite that we may send messengers through all the territory of Israel. Then if there is no one to save us, we will give ourselves up to you. And the story goes on that they do send the message out and it gets to many Israelites. And when the Israelites get this message, many of them weep. And so I imagine that Nahash is a very powerful man with a huge army and he's not even afraid. You know, he's probably confident thinking no one in Israel could save Jabesh Gilead from his hands. And so he's ready to just take out their right eyes and mistreat them. But here is 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9. And before this, the scriptures tell us that the Holy Spirit went and just influenced Saul and worked in the people to muster them up. And here's verse 9. And they said to the messengers who had come, Thus shall you say to the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow by the time the sun is hot, you shall have salvation. When the messengers came and told the men of Jabesh, they were glad. And so here, I want you to realize the people of Jabesh, they weren't glad after they were rescued. They were glad once they got the message. They believed the message that tomorrow, by the time the sun is hot, you shall have salvation. And um, the story goes on, of course, the next day, the Israelite army comes and defeats uh, the Ammonites. <clears throat> the Jabesh Gilead are rescued. But I want you to realize how they were glad once they got this message of rescue. And I want you to realize we also have a message of rescue and we have reason to be glad and even more so than Jabesh because this message comes from God. God is the one who gave us this message of rescue and we need to take a hold of that and celebrate and be thankful and gladness should come naturally. Just like these Jabesh people were glad when they got this message, we got many messages from God letting us know that God will indeed rescue us from all our afflictions. Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I've mentioned this verse so many times because it's so precious to me. You are righteous if you're a Christian and the Lord delivers him out of them all. He promised that is a message of deliverance. All the afflictions that we will face in our lives, the Lord will rescue us. In Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So not only will God 
just rescue us at the end. But in the meantime, and all the way to the rescue, he is going to strengthen us and help us. And if he helps us and strengthen us, what can we not overcome? It says, good is done. He will rescue us. And he's going to be with us the entire time. So these are messages. These are promises from God so that we don't have to fear. And we can know that our deliverance will come. First Peter 5.10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And so not only will he rescue you, but there's a point to your trial. There is significance to your suffering. He says, after you suffered a little while, and compared to eternity, this truly is a little while, God said that he himself will come and restore you, confirm you, strengthen you, and establish you. You'll be better off after this trial than you were before if you would trust in him. If you would trust in his working in your life to make you more like Christ, to prepare you for his use. And as you see him rescue you over and over again, you will learn to rely on him more and your faith will grow and your peace will become greater no matter what comes. If you look at the older brothers and sisters in Christ who have relied on God their whole lives and went through trial after trial, they trust in God. They know God is faithful. And no matter what comes their way, they are more quick to surrender and trust in God alone. And I hope we can get there as well. And so the Jabesh Gilead people, just like they got the message of rescue, I'm telling you, God has given you the message of rescue. And he promised he will come and deliver you at the right time and the right method. So find peace in his word and be glad. Focus on being glad. Focus on being thankful for his faithfulness and how he will indeed come and rescue you from all your afflictions, no matter how severe, how long it's been, no matter how dire it looks or impossible it looks, he will make a way. He will come and rescue you and he will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. God bless you.